Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about this lens. And we're also going to talk about this lens. But mainly, we're going to talk about our experience and our patient's experience with this lens. Let's go. If you're over age 45 and want to see far, mid, and near without glasses like you could when you were younger, or if you're considering having cataract surgery and want to see clearly at all distances with minimal to no reliance on glasses, then let me share with you my experience and our patient's experience with a new lens that we've been using since April 2024. It's called the Odyssey lens. So I placed about a hundred of these lenses into our patients over the past four months. How well does it work? How happy are the patients receiving this lens implant? How well do they see? And how does this lens compare with the other two premium multifocal lenses that we're using in 2024? Well, first, let me share with you a rule with a fundamental principle about how these lenses work. Like physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation. <laughs> I've seen plenty of people break the, break the laws made by man, but none break the laws made, made by physics. So there's no perfect lens implant, period. Each of these premium multifocal lenses splits light in a different way to provide you a full range of focus far, mid, and near. But they're all bound by the laws of physics and optics. Now, that being said, the greatest lens ever created was the lens that we're born with. It's our natural lens that's clear and flexible in our youth. But every human lens invariably undergoes natural, inevitable optical degradation. And that manifests in two ways. Number one, our clear lenses gradually lose transparency and turn cloudy. And that process is the process of developing a visually significant cataract. And number two, our lenses, which are clear and flexible, lose flexibility due to aging. And as they lose flexibility, we need to use reading glasses or bifocals to see up close. Nobody outruns father time. What has the experience been for our first 100 Odyssey patients? Excellent to outstanding. Well over 95% of patients receiving the Odyssey lens, in my experience, are highly satisfied with their quality of vision and their range of vision and their ability to see far, mid, and near without glasses. So if I see a patient in our offices, and I recommend the Odyssey lens to that individual, what are the three things that I tell them? Number one, you should see great, far, mid, and near, with minimal to no reliance on glasses, which means you should be able to see the TV and drive and see street signs clearly. You should be able to see your dashboard and desktop computer, and you should be able to read your cell phone and read most printed documents and a menu up close without glasses. The close vision is good to about 18 inches from your eye. If a person wants to hold things really close, like six to 12 inches from their eye, then they'll still need glasses or they'll need glasses to do super fine work, such as threading a needle or sewing. And they will see halos around lights at night, but the vast majority of people adapt to these halos and they're not bothersome, and it does not impair their ability to do what they want at nighttime. Are some patients not satisfied with their vision through the Odyssey lens? Yes, some patients will be intolerant to the halos that they see through the lens 
design. This design with rings has pros and cons. It gives great quality vision and great range of vision, but patients will see halos around lights at night. Some patients will be more bothered than others with these halos, and the halos at night are probably the most common complaint from patients with the Odyssey lens. So who makes the best candidate for the Odyssey lens? It's the highly motivated patient who wants to see well at all distances, far, mid, and near, with the least reliance on glasses. And they're willing to pay out of pocket for a premium lens implant. Premium lens implants are not covered by medical insurance. They're paid for by the patient. Second, patients need to be informed and accept that they will see a halo around lights at night because the lens implant is designed with rings. These rings give you range of vision, but they do create a halo effect at night. Third, a person who accepts that if they have to wear glasses some of the time, for example, to sew or thread a needle or perhaps read in low light or read very teeny tiny print, they're still going to need glasses some of the time. But for most, the vast majority of daily activities for most people, they will be glasses free. Four, pupil size. If a patient has a very large pupil, they may not be the best candidate for an Odyssey lens because again, they will see more of a halo effect. However, I think if patients have about a four millimeter pupil size or smaller in normal room lighting, they'll do just fine with the Odyssey lens. Fifth, patients who have a lot of astigmatism do great with the Odyssey lens because it's manufactured in a version that corrects astigmatism. Number six and finally, patients who have grown dependent on reading glasses or bifocals or who simply no, they can't see well because they're growing older. They do great with the Odyssey lens in general. What are the top two reasons why a person would be dissatisfied with their vision with the Odyssey lens? First, if a patient has unrealistic expectations or they expect to see perfectly like they could in their 20s or 30s. These lens implants create great vision, but the vision is only comparable to a person in their early 40s. It's not as good as the quality of vision through our natural lenses when we're younger. In other words, younger than age 40. Number two, some patients will be intolerant of the halo effect through these lenses. And unfortunately, there's no way to predict or know in advance before surgery who will not like their visual quality with these lens implants. Fortunately, the dissatisfaction rate with these lenses is very low, on the order of about one to 2%. So if you use reading glasses or bifocals to see at all distances, or you have visually significant cataracts, which of these three premium multifocal lens implants do we recommend for you? During your exam in our office, I and our staff will discuss the strengths and weaknesses of these lens implants with you. If you're interested and motivated to have lens replacement or cataract surgery and see your best with the minimal reliance on glasses. As of September, 2024, I'm mostly using the Odyssey and the Clearview as my top two premium intraocular lens implants. And although the Panoptics is an outstanding lens, I'm currently using the Odyssey more than the Panoptics because the visual quality and contrast of the Odyssey lens seems to outperform and surpass that of the Panoptics lens. And the patient complaints seem to be a bit less common and less severe with the Odyssey than with the Panoptics. The Clearview 3 lens is an outstanding lens, but not all patients are candidates for the Clearview because you have to meet three criteria. This lens is only manufactured in a limited power range. So if you're, if you're very nearsighted, 
you're probably not going to be able to receive this lens implant. Secondly, this lens requires that you have a pupil diameter of 2.75 millimeters or larger in normal lighting. And then thirdly, this lens does not come in a version that corrects pre-existing astigmatism. In our practice, our medical optometrists see the vast majority of our patients who've received a premium lens implant. So let me ask them to share with you their early impressions of the Odyssey lens. Yeah, we've been seeing the Odyssey for a number of months now. I've seen quite a few. Obviously, our numbers are a little bit higher on the panoptics. We have more uh, wide range of panoptics patients, but Odyssey has performed quite well that we've been seeing, I would say, at the one-month visit. The Odyssey patients have more impressive distance vision, possibly, than the panoptics patients. However, their near vision is quite similar between the panoptics and the Odyssey patients. I would say, in my experience, it's similar. Um, some patients, maybe less than 2% long-term, kind of have halo issues. However, most adapt to them with time, both with panoptics and with Odyssey. I would say, based on the sample size we've seen in the Odyssey versus panoptics, overall Odyssey tend to be a little bit more impressed with their vision. They, uh, so basically patients come in and they are seeing quite well, say 2020 J1 plus in both a panoptics and an Odyssey. And Odyssey will have less feedback saying, uh, I don't see well for a certain reason versus the panoptics. The panoptics patients seem to be 2020 J1 plus, which is a great vision and still have some complaints about how they see generally. I would say with the Odyssey, the distance vision tends to be a little bit sharper. And the near vision with the Odyssey, does it seem to, seem to be better, worse, or the same as panoptics? About the same. About the same. Compared from their day one to their month one, definitely, things improve as the lens settles into place with the Odyssey. But that tends to be the trend with both Odyssey and panoptics. I will say, though, that you know we haven't seen the Odyssey long term. So mm -hmm. uh, we haven't seen these patients one year, two years out. So it's hard to say if something's going to pop up down the road. Maybe they have you know symptoms that weren't there at the month one visit you know, a few years later. Totally fair. Yeah, about yeah. how many post-op odysseys have you seen? I would say I've probably seen 30 or so. And how are they doing? So far, so good. I think I can't remember any of them that have had major complaints that I'd have to send back to you for anything, so seemingly well. No, I feel like it's extremely comparable to the Panoptics lens. I would say that they're certainly not less happy than the Panoptics patients. We obviously have a much smaller sample size currently, but I would say that I have less dissatisfied patients with Odyssey than I do with Panoptics. And there's really nothing about the lens that people are all complaining about, and so it seems to be a great lens for a very wide population of people. How's the reading vision with the Odyssey? Great. People are usually seeing 2020 up close. I don't think that I have had anybody complain about the quality of their distance vision so far. I would say it's similar. I don't think that I've noticed that people are complaining any more or less. I think we do a very good job of telling people that they're going to be there. And so they go into it knowing that. And I think that it's, I get the same response as I do from the panoptics lens. Yeah, I don't know. It may be something about the design or material of the lens that is giving them maybe a bit more contrast than the panoptics does because um, I do feel like and we'll probably learn more with time, but I feel like the panoptics lens, one of the biggest complaints is sometimes their distance vision can just not be quite as good as it was before surgery. And so far, I haven't really found that to be true with the Odyssey lens. So in conclusion, our early experience with the Odyssey lens has been outstanding. The vast majority of our patients seem to be very happy. Now with every lens, every single premium lens implant, there are going to be a small percentage of patients who are unhappy with their vision. And for those patients, we'll work with them. And they may be the types of patients who need to have additional surgery to fine tune their vision, or worst case scenario, will need to perform an intraocular lens exchange, remove the lens implant that they're dissatisfied with, and replace it 
with a different lens implant that has a different optical design, which will hopefully give them the range and quality of vision that they prefer. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.